Good afternoon, everyone. Johanna Miller with the Vermont Natural Resources Council here on this gorgeous, gorgeous Friday afternoon. Um, and it's been a great week and I am here with uh, my friend and colleague Lauren Hurl, as well as Senator Representative Sarah Copeland Hansis of Bradford, who is the co-chair of the Climate Solutions Caucus, a true leader on climate. And we are here to give you what I, um, a quick update on what I hope you've already heard and have been celebrating which comes to um, the success of the Global Warming Solutions Act and the successful override um, of that really crucial bill um, this week, setting, setting the stage for this bill to be implemented in the state of Vermont. It's really exciting news. We've worked so hard with so many of you, and I'm gonna turn it over to um, Representative Copeland Hansis to tell us more about what that means, how we got there, and where we go from here. Great, thanks Joey. It's so good to be here this afternoon. Um, what a beautiful day um, and, a, and a beautiful week. Uh, we really have a lot to celebrate. Um, this week is the final passage um, and enactment into law of a bill that has uh, been a priority of the Climate Solutions Caucus and a priority for me for, uh, for two years, this entire biennium. Um, it's been a long process. We've had a lot of, uh, a lot of folks working on this, uh, not only the 80 plus members of the Climate Solutions Caucus, um, but in, in particular, the, um, my co-chair, Chris Pearson, Senator Pearson from Chittenden and I um, uh, went and held a series of roadshow events where Vermonters from around the state came and interacted with us and, uh, you know, sort of kicked the tires on our climate priorities and asked us tough questions and asked us if we were uh, thinking of all, uh, all of the different angles and really, I think, strengthened the, the bill and strengthened the, uh, the way that we talk about this with Vermonters. And, and it was a very helpful uh, series of events. Um, I also wanna hearken us back to where we were just a little, um, a little over a year ago with a series of climate rallies going on. And uh, in my neck of the woods anyway, those Friday afternoon climate um, rallies continued every Friday, uh, right up into the sort of the dead of winter, um, which really showed people's commitment to uh, to, you know, pressing us and asking us to act on climate. Um, I want to send a shout out too to the Youth Climate Lobby because they did a fabulous job of engaging. They had their, their Youth Climate Congress where they passed a resolution uh, that they then delivered to the governor and House and Senate leadership in January really laying out the case for, hey, you know, we need to live on this planet for another 70 or 80 years and we need you to start uh, working harder to save it. Um, so thank you to the youth of Vermont who came together uh, back when we used to be able to come together in the state house. Um, they did such a fabulous job. So uh, to me, this is such an exciting culmination in, uh, in what has been a long two years of work. And, um, and what's really exciting about this now is that we can turn our heads instead of organizing to start acting, we can turn our heads and our focus to organizing on how to act, how to help Vermonters save money uh, by transitioning to renewable energy sources for their heating and transportation and how to finally bring down our emissions in Vermont. Um, so I'm so excited. It's been a, a, a long journey um, and it's nice to know that, uh, that we can lay down uh, the, the hiking boots that we've had and maybe put on some running shoes and start picking up the pace of our action. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and I wanted to finish up. We always like to have a call to action uh, with these and we have seen the power of our collective action together as Representative Copeland Hans has just laid out and Joey laid out um, where so much amazing activism has helped kind of propel this issue and make sure it's been a top priority. Um, and you know, just thank you so much to, to Sarah for the leadership of, um, you know, you in particular have dedicated countless nights, days, amazing work. Um, so thank you so much for all you've done and the Climate Caucus and um, other House and Senate leaders that really made this happen. But from the bottom of our hearts, we wouldn't be here without you. And thank you so much for that. Um, and as, as you said, you know, now it's such an exciting time. So we hope people will stay engaged in the hard work of how we actually transition and transform our economy into a better, more resilient, stronger local economy. Um, in the short term, 
please take a moment to thank your representatives and senators who voted for this bill. It's hard to override a governor's veto of legislation. Um, it's an election season, you know, take a moment to thank them. We'll post in the comments the link to find, you know, how your, how your uh, legislators voted and contact information for them, how you can find all that. So send them a quick message. It really makes a difference. And we're in election season. Make sure you are supporting your local pro-climate action legislators. You are showing up for them, write them a letter, thanking them for this. Um, whatever you can do and, you know, absolutely vote, vote, vote up and down the ballot for uh, climate uh, allies who are running for, you know, from the top of the ticket down to the bottom. You know, we know both our local election has a huge difference, makes an incredible difference who's in power. And our federal election, of course, is critically important too. So vote there. Encourage everyone you know, far and wide, <laughs> to, to vote, vote, vote. Uh, now is the season. So thank you again. Can't wait to get to work on the next phases. Uh, stay tuned for what that's going to look like. And in the meantime, take a moment to celebrate. Yay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll be back soon. Take care.